Chapter 15 was all about doing a single electrophilic aromatic substitution. And now chapter 16 is about doing two electrophilic aromatic substitutions in a row. This is all about what happens if you try to add two electrophiles. And it turns out there's a bunch of new issues there. So in this case, we've done one electrophilic aromatic substitution. And now we're considering putting another electrophile on. And this might be the same type of electrophile as before, or it might be different. It doesn't matter whether they're the same or different. The question is, after we've added the first electrophile, will it be easier or harder to add the next electrophile? That's our key issue. Does this first electrophile make it easier or harder to add the next electrophile? That's a good answer. So your answer was, it depends. That's not a very satisfying answer, but that's the correct answer. Whether it's easier or harder depends. Suppose that this electrophile makes it easier to do another reaction. There's a name for those. Orthoparadirectors. Activators. Activators is the word I was going for. If this makes it easier to do another reaction, it would be an activator. And if it makes it harder to do another reaction, it would be called a deactivator. De we already a little bit talked about activating the substituents when we talked about the diels alder reaction. We talked about how some substituents can activate the diels alder reaction. Well, substituents can either activate or deactivate electrophilic aromatic substitution as well. Now, in general, we need to know what types of substituents would be activators and what would be deactivators. What type of property makes you into an activator and what type of property makes you into a deactivator? Um, if you're an electron donating or withdrawing. That's right. Very good. That was the same issue as for Diels Alder. Now, if you're electron donating, does that make you an activator or a deactivator? Activator. Excellent. Electron donating substituents are activators. Why? Because through resonance, they can push their electrons down, and you put a negative charge somewhere on the benzene ring to activate it to add an electrophile. Kind of. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good explanation. That's a good explanation. Let me put that slightly differently. Remember, what's the hard step here? The hard step is unforming the benzene. The hard step is this step, right? Chapter 15 only discusses adding a single electrophile. Chapter 16 is about when you add an, another electrophile. Oh. Notice that the, the title of chapter 16 is Electrophilic Attack on Derivatives of Benzene. Oh, then we definitely well, know. Cool. Pardon? No, like, we were like scared we were going to learn like completely new materials. But we had, like, we, yeah, we oh. didn't realize this was chapter 16. Yeah, we all of chapter 16 is about this. That's right. Now, this might turn out that this can be get pretty difficult, but yeah, it's all about this material. Okay. So, um, so chapter, again, what was chapter 15 about? It was about electrophilic attack on benzene. And chapter 16 is called electrophilic attack on derivatives of benzene. Well, here's the derivative of benzene. It's a derivative because it has an extra substituent. Now, after the second electrophile attacks, we're going to get an intermediate that looks like this with a positive charge. Now, the key thing is, how can we facilitate this first step? This is the hard step. How can we facilitate this? Well, we need to stabilize something that will stabilize this intermediate here. Well, how could this first electrophile stabilize this intermediate? By being electron donating or electron withdrawing? Donating. Because this has a positive charge. Since the intermediate is going to have a positive charge, the way to, um, to facilitate this is that the first substituent was electron donating. That's a slightly different explanation than the, from the one that you gave. In some ways, your explanation had some advantages to this. Uh, but, but this is a good explanation, too. If this is an electron donating substituent, it will help to stabilize this positive charge, which makes the whole reaction easier. And if this is an electron withdrawing substituent, it destabilizes the positive charge, which makes the whole reaction harder. That's why electron donating substituents are activators, and electron withdrawing substituents are deactivators. Now what we need to do is learn who's electron donating and who's electron withdrawing. How about an alkyl chain? Would that be electron donating or withdrawing? Donating. Donating. 
Why? Because we've just memorized that carbon chains are electron donating. They are only slightly electron donating, but they are electron donating. So are alkyl groups activators or deactivators? Activators. Donating or withdrawing? Withdrawing. It's withdrawing because. Oh, because But isn't sometimes a seal. Oh, but that's if it's connected. Right, sorry. Okay. This is electron withdrawing. The fluorines are very electronegative, so by induction, they're pulling electrons towards them. Now, it's true that these have lone pairs, which you might think would allow them to donate by resonance. But there is no way that you can form a resonance structure between the fluorine and the benzene because they're separated by this carbon. It would, might be a different story if the fluorine was attached to the benzene. Yeah. But when it's attached to this carbon, there really is no resonance between this fluorine and this benzene. There's no, they're, they're not close enough to have any resonance. So there's no resonance effects here, just electron withdrawing by induction. So the alkyl groups are electron donating by what we called hyperconjugation last term. And this is electron donating, this is electron donating, and this is electron donating by induction. Electron donating or withdrawing. Looks like there's a difference of opinion here. I would say withdrawing because the electrons move towards the O. Oh, okay. So you're giving a resonance argument. That's good. This is electron withdrawing by resonance. Also by induction. The oxygen is also pulling the electrons towards it by induction because it's very electronegative. Now, maybe the best way to show this is I'm still imagining that we're, we're looking at the intermediate after the second electrophile is already attacked. <clears throat> so there's already a positive charge from when the second electrophile is attacked. And then there's this resonance form that puts another positive charge on the benzene ring. Well, that's not going to make the benzene ring happy to have two positive charges. So this shows how through resonance, the oxygen is pulling electrons out of the benzene ring towards it. Why would we expect the oxygen to be pulling the electrons towards it through resonance? Because it's very electronegative. Remember that if there's a pi bond between two atoms, the pi bond tends to move towards the more electronegative atom. It would be unusual and insignificant for the pi bond to move towards the carbon here, because it's less electronegative. So this clearly shows that this was electron withdrawing, partly by induction, but the most important effect is the resonance effect. So electron donating are activators, electron withdrawing are deactivators. Absolutely. So what type of what type would this be? Deactivator. Deactivator. And the CF3 was a deactivator. Uh, we said it was oh, yeah, why did I put it up here? Yeah, I was, I was totally messed up. All right. <laughs> I was confused. Yeah, this should have been a deactivator because it's electron withdrawn. This is electron withdrawing by induction, and this is electron withdrawing by resonance. We already talked about substituents like this when we were talking about Diels-Alder, and we saw that they were electron withdrawing there, so they're also electron withdrawing here.
there's a cyano group, is this electron donating or withdrawing? Withdrawing. Because? The resonance. Right. Again, the nitrogen is the most electronegative, so it tends to pull the five bonds towards itself. So that again shows that through resonance, this is electron withdrawing. And there's also an induction effect where it's electron withdrawing. So that would be a deactivator. 